So, you are listening all the philosophical aspects of yoga. It is your duty now to share this information with the person you know. Tell them that Maharshi Patanjali is the father of yoga. When I was conducting workshop in Shanghai, I simply asked, who is the father of yoga? They didn't even think. They said, Vikram is the father of yoga. <laughs> because that is the person they know. So, that should not have this misconception. Then you are really knowing nothing about yoga. You are simply following the crowd, the mob. If you want to be individual, you have to have the depth in the subject understanding of it. So Maharshi Patanjali is the father of yoga. So that is why this verse goes that I recite Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham. Through the subject of yoga, you help me to cleanse my consciousness. Padena Vacha, through the grammar, you cleansed my speech. Malam Sharirasya Yog Vaidya Kena. Through the subject of Ayurveda, you helped me to be physically fit. You gave me the health. To this great sign, I prostrate myself. When I start practicing yoga, I have to remember all these rishis or the yogis. Only for them, it is possible for us to experience it. If you come to the path of yoga, you will also have the danger of developing a different kind of ego. It is called as spiritual ego. I practice yoga for 10 years. I meditate for 20 years. I am vegetarian. I never eat meat. All these things they say. They are so egoistic. They are also the teachers, but they are so ego. They are showing ego everywhere. They are never humble. And why? Because they think that yoga is from them. That is not right. This is why the prayer is very important in any spiritual practice to stay humble. It never belonged to me. I am not the author. I am simply using the gift the Patanjali is giving to me. Abahu Purusha Karam Shanka Chakra Siddharinam Sahasra Shirasam Sushvetam. You are a man. You know, your wisdom can be compared. You know, the wisdom that you can gather out of 10,000 heads, put it together, that is your wisdom. I no more see you as a person. You are divine to me. Pranamami Patanjalim. I need your blessing to continue my spiritual journey. And remember, always help me to drop my ego. That is the practice of yoga. It is not to enhance or strengthen the ego. Every day you have to weaken it. Pranamami Patanjali, I prostrate. This is a beautiful gesture in the Vedic society. If you find any elderly person or your teachers, you try to prostrate, you try to touch their feet. That is the indication that you are ready to surrender. If a man comes to a guru, I will talk about the different people who are in search of different things. Here, the first people who come into the path of yoga is out of curiosity. Your neighbor is going to do yoga, so let me also do it. Or whenever I meet girls, they talk about their yoga class and their yoga clothes. So I'm missing out that conversation. <laughs> so I have to get into yoga. So many people, they come into the path of yoga out of curiosity, not to know it. The second R, we call them as the Jignasi. They came for the investigation. They are already thinking that intellectually they have understood. They are here not to experience it, simply to intellectually understand the theory. So you will find many orators who are very good in the Vedanta, 
but their experience is nothing. They simply have understood through their mind using their intelligence. The third is the finer one. We call them the mumukshu. He is the disciple. There is a difference between the student and the disciple. Student is the one who is simply seeking for information. A student wants to become a teacher anytime. He is waiting for the opportunity. But here you need to understand, teacher is also having only information to give. Nothing else is there. He has gathered the information and he is giving it to the students. And the second is the relationship of a disciple and a master. Master does not teach anything which he has not experienced. He is not going to refer any book. He is going to teach you through his experience. And he attracts only the disciple. Because students will get bored being around a master. Because master simply sits, he doesn't even talk. So now, a person who is in search of knowledge, he will become restless. This man is not even talking. I would like to share the experience that I had with my master. When I become good in practicing asanas, you know, I was always trying to demonstrate it anywhere, at any place. And my master saw this. Oh, he's thinking that he's too good. So he said, come on this Sunday, I will teach you an advanced practice in yoga. I said, I feel so lucky. Now I feel more egoistic because now he considers me as the best in the yoga shala. That is why he is teaching me the advanced practice. And you have to come on the Sunday. But it was difficult for me. Because every Sunday I used to play cricket with my friends and I was the captain. I said, is it going to be very interesting? Then only I'll come. He said, no, it is the best practice in yoga. I said, okay, I'll say no to my friends. I was so uh, looking, very eagerly looking forward to that class. On Sunday I went, I saw my master in meditation. Always remember, if you see anybody in sleep or meditation, never disturb. <laughs> It is going to be very wrong after they get up. So I was waiting so that my master can talk something. Fifteen minutes, not even a single movement. He doesn't even notice me. So I said, okay, if he opens his eyes, he will see me. Even I'll sit with my closed eyes. But what to do? After half an hour, I again opened my eyes. Nothing was there. Went one hour, one fifteen. One and a half hours, not a single word. Or even, he has not even noticed that I am there. And I was simply waiting for him to talk, to teach the advanced practice. And I felt somebody is patting on my shoulder. And I looked up, it was my guru. And he showed me the door to go out. I got really angry. He is really a very bad person. He made me to miss my cricket match and he made me to sit quietly for two hours doing nothing. And now he's indicating me to go out. So I went out. I was feeling so much of anger. I came the very next day for the practice, but I was not even looking towards my masters. I was feeling so angry because he made me to miss my important match and he didn't teach me any advanced practice. And why I became so angry? Because when I met my friends in the evening, they said, Show me the advanced practice. I sit in a cross-like position, closed my eyes and said, this is what I learned. And they started laughing. That made me feel too anger towards my master. And he said, how was the practice yesterday? I said, what practice? You didn't teach me anything. And the thing that he said was so beautiful. He said, I was trying to teach you silence. How I can teach silence using words? 
This is the way of a master. Sometimes I even find books in my uh, students reading, a thick book called How to Be Silent. Why you have to read a book to be silent? Keep it aside and you simply sit. That is how you are going to be silent. But no, now you have to read a book about it, a thick book, how to be silent, how to appreciate silence. That is not the way of a master. Master says you simply have to sit. So nobody can teach you how to appreciate silence. That is your own job. Even in the path of yoga, master can help you, but you are the person, you are the one who are doing it. So the yoga sutras are having unique qualities in them. He has written in the form of sutra. 